Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will continue to learn about Sublime Text. In particular, we will learn how to create our own snippet. Let's dive straight into the action. So in earlier lessons, we learned about tab triggered snippets. So if I type div and then hit tab, it automatically creates the beginning and end tags. We also learned about emit. So if I wanted to create a div with a class of banner, I just type period for class banner and then hit tab and Emmet takes care of the rest. This is excellent. However, I do often want to include a closing HTML comment at the end of my div to stay organized when I begin nesting different elements. Now Emmet does include a feature that lets us automatically include closing comments. So if I type period banner pipe or vertical bar and then C and hit tab, we see that we almost get what we want. So I still have to hit enter to create a new line. And then the comment isn't on the same line as the closing tag. So it's still not exactly what I want. So let me show you our goal for this lesson. We are going to create the following snippet together. So if I type D and then tab, I can begin typing the name of the class. And we can see that as I'm typing in real time, it's automatically updating the closing tag. And then if I hit tab again, we see that the word cat is a placeholder. So if I wanted to swap this out, I could just type something or if I want to leave it, I can hit tab to jump to the next placeholder and I can swap this out with slow. Now, obviously including a sentence like this is not something we would do in the real world, but we are going to learn in this lesson how to create placeholders like this. So you can use this when you are creating your own JavaScript snippets or your own PHP snippets or your own Ruby snippets. No matter what language you are using, if you find yourself typing the same code again and again, and you can't find a snippet to help you out, create your own snippet. It will make your work more enjoyable. It will reverse your balding. It will lower your cholesterol. So let's get started. Let's learn how to create a new snippet of our own. All right, behind the scenes, I just removed that snippet from my system. So we can see that if I type D and hit tab, nothing happens. So now we can recreate that snippet together. To create a brand new snippet, look in your Sublime Text menu for Tools and then click New Snippet. This will open a new unsaved file and this is the boilerplate snippet code that Sublime Text starts us out with. Let's begin by simply making our snippet output Hello World. We control the output of our snippet in this content area. Now we want to be sure to leave this opening C data line and also its closing counterpart intact. All this is doing is telling XML to not interpret the code that we are about to include as XML. So between this line and this line, we are free to include any code we want. So I will say, hello world. All right, and we want the tab trigger for our snippet to be the letter D. So uncomment this line that reads tab trigger also remove this closing comment. So I will include the letter D. Whatever you want your tab trigger to be, you can type here. I also encourage you to set a scope for your snippet. So let's uncomment this scope line. Setting a scope makes sure that your snippet can only be activated when you are in that particular language. So in this case, we are creating an HTML snippet. And so we only need this snippet to be available when we are editing HTML files. So our scope will be text.html. This way, if we are in JavaScript or in CSS and we accidentally hit tab after the letter D, this HTML based snippet will not be triggered. Just for reference, the scope code for JavaScript is source.js. Scope name for CSS is source.css. I will include a link so you can find the scope names for every major language, but we want this set to text.html. Okay, at this point, I'm ready to save my snippet. So command S. Sublime Text will automatically know to save this in the correct system folder. I will name this my div. You can name your snippet anything that you would like, but we do want to be sure to give it an extension of dot sublime hyphen snippet. Excellent, now if we hop back over to a demo HTML page and type D and then hit tab, there is our snippet. Okay, so we know our snippet is working, but 
we don't want to just output hello world, we want a div with an auto closing self comment. So let's remove hello world. And instead, div class equals closing div. Now within the quotes for the class name, dollar sign one, this will create a field which we can reuse for our closing comment. So let's just create a standard HTML comment. And I like to include a forward slash, maybe you don't, just to signify that it's the end of the element. And then we want to output that field name again. So let's hit save and let's try out our snippet. D tab banner. Excellent. Now I do see that my cursor is blinking on both lines and I don't like that. I would prefer that it was only on the top original line. So we will circle back around to that issue towards the end of the lesson. But for now, let's move on to learning about placeholders. So let's head back over to our snippet. Let's imagine that within this div, we want to create a paragraph. And within that paragraph, we want it to read the blank was blank. So the first word, we will want it to be a field. So dollar symbol, curly brackets, two. Now, if we include a colon, we can define the placeholder text. So let's say cat. So the blank was, now we want to include an additional field. So dollar sign, curly brackets. This will be our third field. So three, colon, fast. So let's save our snippet and give it a spin. So in our HTML demo file, D tab, banner, let's tab again. I'm happy with the word cat, tab again. I'm not happy with the word fast. Great, so it's that simple. We can pepper our snippet code with different tab stopping points. This is the syntax if we simply want our cursor to be placed somewhere, just dollar symbol and a number. And this is the syntax if we want to use placeholder text, curly brackets and then a colon. Now I did promise that we would circle back and address the odd issue with this mirrored field. So let's try this again. You'll notice that when we are typing the name of the class, our cursor is also blinking on the mirrored line. Now, in many cases, this will be the behavior that you want. But in my particular case, I don't. I only want the cursor to be on the first original line. So instead of mirroring this field, we will use something called substitution. Let's jump over to our snippet. When we want to use substitution, we will use the curly brackets. So dollar sign curly brackets, then the number. And we are going to use regular expressions. Now this syntax accepts four arguments. So we will include three forward slashes. So the first is the field that we want to use. The second is where we include the regular expression. Now I would be lying if I said that I understood regular expressions 101%. But I do know that if I want to substitute the full text string, I will use a backward slash and then asterisk for all characters. And we can leave this third and fourth options empty. So let's hit save and give our snippet another spin. Let's delete this. Try it again, D tab banner. So you can see that now as I'm typing this class name, there is no cursor on the comment line and we only have the cursor where we would expect it to be, which means our snippet is now complete. Now I know a common question at this point will be, where is my snippet file being saved? How do I find this file on my computer? The easiest way is to look in your Sublime Text menu for preferences. It should be one of the main options on PC. On Mac, it's under Sublime Text, Preferences, and then choose Browse Packages. That will pull open the Packages folder, and then we want to navigate into the User folder. And this is the folder where your snippets will be. So here is the snippet that we just created together. So from here, you can rename the snippet, you can delete it if you don't like it, you get the idea. And that will bring this lesson to a close. Now, please don't think that snippets are only for simple things like HTML output. In this lesson, I simply wanted to show you the basics, fields, placeholders, mirroring, and substitution. And now I want you to take those basics and run with them. So go and create snippets that match your idiosyncrasies, your preferences. Ooh, I want a new line here, a tab here. I want a tab down to this line. You get the idea. Create snippets that read your mind and make your work more enjoyable in any programming language and for any level of complexity. 
In our next lesson, we will learn how to customize Sublime Text key bindings or keyboard shortcuts. Should be a lot of fun. I will see you then. The lesson you just watched is a part of my web development workflow course. The course covers Sublime Text, SAS architecture and organization, Git, Grunt, Bower, and more. And we use all of this to build a modern website together. The lessons that are about a single tool will be available for free on YouTube. And the lessons where we really sink our teeth into something or see how two or three tools are coming together or maybe write a bit of custom CSS or JavaScript together will be part of the premium course. If you want to be notified when the premium course is released, you can sign up via the description for this video. Or if you're watching this video in the future, the course has been released and you can find a heavily discounted coupon code in the description for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.